Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining. I'm Melanie Anthony, Communication Advisor at RIPRA. Thank you for attending our HWP Registry Generator Focus Information Session today. This webinar will outline what future users can expect leading up to the launch, as well as answer your questions. To ask a question, click on the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen and type in your question or comment and click send. There's also the upvote feature where you can like another person's question. This will move the question up the queue and prompt us to answer it faster. We will be posing for question at the end of a webinar. If we can't get to your question because of time, or if your question is very specific to your own business needs, please feel free to reach out to our HWP team at hwp at rpoa.ca, who will be happy to help. We will share these slides with you via email. This webinar is also being recorded and will be posted to our website this week. With me today is uh, RIPRA HWP project sponsor, Noah Gitterman. I will now hand it over to Noah to kick off today's presentation. Great, thanks. Uh, thanks, Melody. Um, and um, thanks everyone for joining. We're, we're gonna just walk through um, an introduction about um, what RIPRA is and what the new hazardous waste registry is. Um, some information about delegation in the new system, account creation, um, and some next steps. Uh, and then, uh, like Melanie said, have time for some uh, questions um, uh, from the Q&A box. Uh, so what, why don't we get started with uh, the next slide, please? So um, maybe just a little bit, if you're not familiar with RIPRA and who we are, um, RIPRA, RPRA, uh, is a regulator that uh, was created by the government of Ontario uh, to implement a new uh, resource recovery regulations under the Resource Recovery and Circular Economy Act, um, introducing a new producer responsibility framework for um, recycling and resource recovery in the province. And we also have a mandate to provide uh, registry services to programs as directed by the minister. Um, and um, uh, right now there's two registry programs. Uh, we've been directed to provide one for excess soil and the hazardous waste program registry. We are accountable uh, to uh, the minister um, and we provide information to the minister uh, to support um, uh, policy and program decisions, but RIPRA does not determine policy uh, and we don't um, develop uh, the regulations. So uh, we implement regulations or we implement uh, digital registry services. Next slide, please. Um, we, we've been uh, mandated to create this uh, hazardous waste program uh, registry um, to handle all the reporting that's required under Ontario's hazardous waste program. Um, we'll be setting collecting fees to recover program costs and supporting um, stakeholders and all of the registrants who will be using uh, the new hazardous waste program registry. This new registry will replace the current H1 system. Uh, and it will include a mandatory online reporting portal um, for um, uh, facilities and waste streams and waste activities, uh, including electronic manifesting. Um, and there will be a mobile app uh, along with um, uh, the online portal. Uh, the ministry will continue to uh, implement the hazardous waste program and be responsible for compliance and enforcement activities. RPRA is, uh, RPRA's job is to um, run the reporting registry um, and to help uh, folks like you uh, get the reporting done that they need to get done. Next slide, please. So we've been uh, developing this registry um, uh, for over a year now. Uh, we've been working in close collaboration with the ministry, our technology partners, 
um, and um, uh, industry stakeholders. Um, and we've been gathering uh, stakeholder input as we've developed and designed uh, the registry um, in order to uh, try to make sure that um, it uh, uh, meets users' needs uh, as well as um, the ministries. Next slide, please. Um, so there are uh, the, the changes happening to uh, your reporting under the program are um, coming into force on January 1st, 2023. Um, um, some things are ending. Uh, so there will be, there will no longer be annual registration for each uh, generating facility. And there will be no more paper manifests for waste shipments as of January 1st. Um, a lot is remaining the same. Um, so the substance of your reporting, what you report and when you report it, uh, all that is staying the same. That's not changing. Um, what's changing is how you do the reporting. And so what's new is that you'll, you'll now be required to report through the new hazardous waste registry uh, instead of HWIN. Um, there is an ability to use the online registry to do delegation from generators to service providers to handle reporting and fee payment, if you wish. Uh, carriers and receivers will need to have registry accounts in order to handle um, uh, electronic manifesting. Um, and there is also an option uh, available uh, on request for bulk data transfers uh, to support high volume manifesting uh, if necessary. So all of these changes are wrapped up in amendments to regulation 347 that were um, finalized back in April. Um, and uh, they almost all take effect on January 1st, 2023. Next slide, please. So we thought we'd talk a little bit about a delegation before we get into how to set up your new account because you might want to think about delegation or you should be thinking about delegation before um, you um, uh, start interacting with the new registry. Next slide, please. So that the amended regulation 347 clarifies that uh, generators can delegate their reporting obligations to a service provider. So the service provider can submit information to the registry on the generator's behalf. Some of you may be doing that already um, in terms of how you're managing users through HWIN, um, but the new regulation clarifies um, uh, 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 that uh, delegation is allowed. Um, and we built into the new registry a couple of different ways to do it. Um, when you, uh, when a generator um, chooses a delegate to do reporting on their behalf, we call that entity an authorized generator delegate or AGD. And so you'll see reference to AGD again throughout this presentation. Um, and it's just a shorthand for um, uh, someone a generator has authorized to do reporting on, uh, on their behalf. Um, so there's two options. One is full delegation. So in this option, the generator has a business uh, arrangement with a service provider, an AGD. Um, for the AGD to do all of the reporting on the generator's behalf, including setting up facilities uh, and waste streams uh, from the start. Um, and that would also include uh, managing invoices through the system. Um, so in that full delegation model, the generator does not need to interact with the registry at all. So the generator hires an AGD and the AGD sets everything up, manages the facilities and waste streams, um, uh, fee payments from the start. The second option is partial delegation. Um, so in that option, the generator creates their own account in the registry. Um, and then uh, using the system grants uh, um, uh, access to an AGD in the system.
to do certain activities like um, managing waste streams, reporting on site activities, um, and doing manifest sign offs on behalf of the registrator, uh, on behalf of the generator. Uh, but in that, um, uh, in the partial delegation model, the generator is setting up an account, doing the initial uh, facility setup, and um, will be managing uh, invoices on their own behalf. Um, so uh, hopefully at a high level, that's giving you a, a, a bit more information about what delegation means will be, uh, I think it'll come up again as we get through um, the rest of the presentation. Next slide, please. So again, we, we've we tried to create a table again to sort of indicate um, uh, the differences between full and partial delegation and no delegation. It's probably worth emphasizing that even without delegation, carriers and receivers will still be able to create manifests for generators. Once a, car once a carrier is registered in the system, um, they will be able to create manifests uh, for you without being a, an authorized delegate, without being an AGD. Uh, but there are a lot of advantages to um, doing full delegation or partial delegation. Again, the key difference between full and partial is that in full delegation, the generator is not interacting with the registry at all. Everything's handed off to the AGD, uh, including managing invoices. With partial delegation, the generator does the initial setup and then uh, identifies service providers in the system to help uh, manage their uh, waste streams, uh, their activities, um, uh, even to sign off on manifests on their behalf. Um, 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 and so we are, um, before you start interacting with the registry, it'll be good to have in mind sort of what kind of relationship you want to have with your service providers. Um, this is something um, we want you, we are hoping you will start thinking about now. So the registry will be open to um, uh, registrants on November 15th. Um, and we're hoping that um, by then you will have a sense of what kind of business arrangement you want with your service provider, whether it'll be a full delegation model um, or a partial delegation model or something else. Um, uh, it's important to note that carriers and receivers will not be able to ship or receive waste from your facilities if your facilities are not set up in the registry. And so that's either gonna happen, uh, either you're gonna do that as a generator or your AGD will do that for you in the uh, full delegation model. Next slide, please. So now let's talk a bit about account creation. Uh, we can go straight to the next slide. So you will need uh, an account in the new hazardous waste registry, or your AGD will need to set up your uh, set up an account on your behalf um, in order for you to complete your generator registration report. So your, your facility and your waste streams, essentially. In order to be listed on a manifest as a generator, your facilities need to be, um, uh, and waste streams need to be in the system. In order to create or edit manifests, um, to sign manifests, and to report on-site waste activities. Again, you can create your account starting November 15th. And um, your account must be set up before January 1st, 2023, uh, for you to begin manifesting using the new registry on January 1st. Uh, and that's because paper manifests will no longer be accepted as of January 1st, 2023. Um, all, uh, paper manifests that had a ship date in the 2022 calendar year and payments for 2022 shipments will uh, still be processed through HWIN in early 2023, but all of your 2023 activity will now happen through the new registry. So again, either you will be going in to um, 
uh, uh, do the initial setup for your uh, facilities, um, or you'll have um, uh, hired an AGD to do it for you. Next slide, please. So the uh, registry account and user management will be a bit different, uh, maybe more than a bit different in the new registry compared to HWIN. So in the new registry, each company has uh, one registry account um, and one account admin user, right? And you can see that in the graphic on the left on the slide. Um, the company can have multiple uh, program enrollments. So RIP, uh, RIPRA, RPRA runs different registry programs. Um, and so with an account, you can be registered in multiple uh, RIPRA uh, registry programs, including hazardous waste. Um, and in each program you're enrolled in, you can have uh, multiple users. Um, the company will manage all facilities. And this is, again, sort of the, uh, one of the key differences with um, the HWIN model, all facilities, so all generator numbers will get managed under one account. So either that will be your company's account as a generator, or that will be your uh, AGD's account if they're doing um, uh, full delegation on your behalf. But all facilities, all generator numbers will get managed under one account in the new system. Next slide, please. So that creating your account uh, is uh, uh, relatively simple and straightforward. There's some key information we'll need about. So there's some key information we'll need about your business. Um, uh, in most cases, we'll need your CRA uh, business number, business address, and phone number, um, uh, name and contact information for your admin user. Um, you'll have to set a password. Um, and then you, you'll be able to add additional users uh, to your account. Uh, if you do not have a CRA number, um, or if you have a need to set up multiple registry accounts, um, uh, you need to contact uh, RIPRA's registry support for assistance. In most cases, you will have a CRA business number and uh, you'll want to manage all your facilities under the same account. Next slide, please. Um, uh, as part of setting up uh, your uh, account and your facilities in the new registry, RIPRA is migrating um, uh, active generator account data from HWIN over to the new registry. So you don't have to input information again that's already in HWIN. Um, and on the slide in front of you um, is just a summary of what data will be migrated and what won't be migrated. Um, so the data that will be migrated is um, um, your, your generator ID, company details, site locations, uh, 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 waste stream information and uh, fee exemption uh, information. So all that get will get transferred over when uh, you um, or your delegate um, uh, initiates uh, the registration process. Um, some of the data that uh, or the data that won't get migrated are um, um, historical manifest data isn't coming over. Um, on-site processing, storage and disposal information, um, the LDR questionnaire. So the LDR forms will be migrated, but not the questionnaire. Um, uh, financial information is not being migrated over. So your, your, your uh, balances in HWIN have to be resolved through HWIN. Those won't come over to the new registry. Um, and certain document attachments won't be coming over. Um, but most of the information you need to get set up, uh, if it's already in HWIN, it will get, uh, it is getting migrated over to the new system and you can activate it uh, through the registration process. Next slide, please. 
So a few things you can do to get ready for account creation. Again, um, uh, the registry is opening for account creation on November 15th. Um, and you should uh, try to get set up before the end of the year. Um, so you're ready to start um, uh, using the new system for um, waste activity reporting, including manifesting on January 1st. Um, if uh, your company already has a RIPRA registry account, so if you're signed up for another RIPRA program, you'll want to contact your account admin uh, to, to let them know that they're aware that this new program will require a new enrollment through the registry. Uh, you want to decide who you will want to add as users to your uh, registry account, uh, your hazardous waste program registry account. Um, and uh, you want to get ready for data migration. So for that to happen, um, you should ensure that your generator accounts in HWIN are active uh, and your waste information in HWIN is up to date. Um, you'll need to know the generator number for each facility and you'll need to know the primary or secondary HWIN username associated with the facility. So to sort of trigger the migration of the data, we'll be asking you to enter the generator number for the facility and a username. Uh, and that will activate the HWIN data so you'll have it available in the new system. Uh, again, uh, I've, uh, I've already said it a few times, but I'll do another reminder. If you are doing full delegation for your facilities, then you don't have to create a registry account. Your delegate can do all of this on your behalf. Next slide, please. Um, so I, I mentioned that along with the new portal, there is also a mobile app. Um, it will also be available for download um, um, from the Apple and Android uh, app stores on November 15th. Um, the mobile app will allow generators, carriers, and receivers to do the manifesting, they, uh, to handle manifesting. So you'll be able to view and sign manifests, create new manifests, and complete manifests on the mobile app. You can also do it through the portal. Uh, the mobile app is additional functionality that you can use if you want to. Uh, your username and password for the app will be the same as it is for the main portal. Um, and um, again, um, uh, it's a good idea to um, uh, start uh, talking to uh, folks in your company who are involved in manifesting so they're aware of this transition away from paper manifests on January 1st and that there's a registry portal and the mobile app available for them to use if they're involved in manifesting. Next slide, please. Um, so RIPRA has been mandated to um, uh, uh, set and recover uh, program costs through fees to registrants. So RPRA is not funded by the government. We're set up by legislation, but we, we don't receive any funding from government. Um, there's a new regulation under our governing legislation that preserves and clarifies the existing hazardous waste program fee exemptions. So those are staying, they're not going away. If you have a fee exemption in HWIN, that will get carried over to the new system. Um, our, RIPRA has its own process for setting fees. Um, and it requires public consultation on fees before they're set. Uh, we will be going out to publicly consult on fees. Uh, uh, right now we're planning for early October. Uh, so um, to consult and then the fees will be set up in the new system for um, January 1st. Next slide, please. Um, in terms of the process for uh, paying fees, um, just like in HWIN, fees will be invoiced to the company that sets up the generation facility. So that will either be the generator, or if the generator is using full delegation, it will be the authorized delegate, the AGD. Um, and fees will be invoiced monthly 
So the big difference here from HWIN is that uh, we uh, the Ripper's registry will not operate with a prepayment option. Uh, prepaid account balances in HWIN will not be transferred over. Um, and so uh, we encourage you to manage your account balances now in HWIN to the extent you can um, to avoid having to um, request or get a, a refund from HWIN um, later on. Uh, but that your account balance management and H1 will get handled through H1 and through the ministry. And the new system, there it will be a monthly uh, invoicing process. Next slide, please. So just looking ahead to some next steps, uh, we can go to the next slide. Um, we um, will be providing um, comprehensive training and support for registry users um, that will include a lot of material posted to our website and interactive training sessions that we'll be hosting. So stay tuned for information about training sessions and materials as we get them posted. Um, some of the materials will have our um, virtual instructor-led training. We'll have short task videos on how to accomplish specific tasks in the registry. There'll be some simulations, quick reference guides. Um, uh, there is already um, a series of uh, frequently asked questions, some F FAQs on our website um, um, to help um, uh, uh, folks get prepared uh, for November 15th. Uh, most of our training content will be role-based, so specific to generator, carrier, or receiver. Um, and our goal really is to just try to make uh, uh, this as um, uh, easy to use as possible. Uh, and the training materials will all, um, I think almost all of them will be posted by November. Uh, so they're ready when folks start coming into the registry to... Uh, create accounts. Next slide, please. Um, again, uh, just a, th there are a bunch of resources on the RPR website. Uh, so there's a we have a web page or series of pages devoted to the hazardous waste program. I mentioned there's some FAQs there already. Um, we're, there's a series of sessions like this one uh, that we have done, um, and there may be more coming all of those, uh, the, the content for all of those gets, po uh, uh, gets posted on the website along with a recording of the session itself. Um, so um, for this one and for others, you'll be able to see the presentation deck um, and um, go through the recording again, if you wish. Um, there's some uh, news articles and news items and um, uh, contact information. Uh, so if you have questions about your, your reporting obligations under the amended Regulation 347, you can contact the ministry. Um, any questions about the new registry and how it will work and how you will use it, uh, you can reach out to RPRA at the address on the screen. And again, this is getting posted, um, so uh, you don't have to write it down. You can go to our website and uh, find it if you need it. Um, again, some key dates. I've already talked about this. So um, um, as of today, we're encouraging all of you to talk to your service provider about what delegation options might make sense for you or, and the service provider. Uh, if you will be uh, initiating your, um, uh, registering your, your facility uh, in the new system, gather the generator numbers and H1 usernames you'll need um, uh, and think about um, uh, managing your prepaid account in HWIN um, and uh, 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 think about making sure your current HWIN facility and waste stream data is up to date uh, before, um, uh, 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 before you set up your new uh, account in uh, the RIP, uh, in RIPRA's registry. Um, uh, in October, you will see a consultation on fees, um, um, and we will, um, 
you will see emails about that and there will be material posted on our website about fees. Um, and starting in November, the training will ramp up. So there'll be training materials, training sessions. November 15th, the registry will open uh, for account setup. And of course, on January 1st is when you will start using the registry to do your manifesting and other waste activity reporting. Next slide, please. So now I think we're on to questions. Yes, thank you, Noah. We will now answer the questions. To ask a question, click on the Q&A tab at the bottom of your screen. Uh, type in your question or comment and click send. There's also the, a vote feature where you can like another person's question. This will move the question up the queue and prompt us to answer it faster. So let's start taking uh, the question. So the first question is about delegation. So for full delegation, who is ultimately responsible for failures to comply with uh, the 347 reporting requirement? Uh, yeah, so the, the regulation makes clear that the generator is still ultimately responsible um, for uh, the reporting, um, but the generator can accomplish it through a service provider. Ultimately, um, it's the generator's responsibility under the regulation. Um, uh, uh, and again, but the regulation makes clear that um, reporting um, can happen through a service provider. Yeah. Uh, the second question is about the manifest. Has the manifest been altered enough to satisfy Transport Canada requirement? Yeah, we, the, the, we are making available through the system uh, a PDF version of the manifest. Uh, we've been in contact with Transport Canada and the new PDF version is being designed so that it will meet TDG requirements in most cases. So the next question is, if the system goes completely paperless, how will any first responders know what to do in case of an accident? Um, yeah, that's a good question. So all of the uh, information um, uh, from the perspective of the Ontario of Ontario's reporting requirements under the hazardous waste program, the ministry will have access to all of the information in the registry. Um, if uh, you're thinking about Transport Canada, Transport Canada and TDG requirements, um, those requirements are still in effect. Um, there are ways um, through TDG to get an exemption from having a piece of paper in the truck. Uh, we encourage you to talk to TDG about that. Um, and um, uh, if you uh, still need that uh, piece of TDG piece of paper in the truck, um, you will be able to download a PDF of the manifest um, uh, for that purpose. Uh, the next question is, just to clarify, if a generator grants access to a carrier, the carrier can sign manifest on behalf of the generator. Can a generator give multiple carriers the ability to sign manifest on their behalf? Um, so the answer is yes to both questions. So through a delegation agreement with your service provider, they can sign on behalf of the generator. Um, as long as you're clear about what you're delegating to the service provider um, and you can uh, do multiple delegations, uh, partial delegations through the registry. The next question is, why is there uh, no better version online where we can help debug the program before it becomes mandatory? Yeah, so we, we are actually doing a, 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 a quite a robust testing uh, process uh, actually right now um, uh, uh, using um, um, uh, 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 along with our technology partners um, using RIPRA staff, ministry staff, 
um, and some uh, industry stakeholders who uh, have volunteered to help uh, test the system. Um, if you are interested in testing, um, uh, you should feel free to reach out to us at the contact email uh, that was on the earlier slide. Um, and um, there may be an opportunity for, um, for you to help out. The next question is, how easy is it to change delegation levels once set up in the system? Um, if you were uh, doing partial delegation, so if you're a generator that's set up um, your own facilities and then have um, identified service providers to get access to those facilities, um, it's uh, pretty simple to um, activate or deactivate uh, those delegates. Um, so if you think you'll be changing service providers frequently, probably partial delegation is the way you want to go. Uh, if you're doing full delegation, there still is a way to change um, uh, service providers. Um, requires um, uh, a, a, a few extra steps, but you, in either case, full or partial, you can uh, change your service providers. Um, it, again, though, if you're if you think you'll be doing that a lot, uh, probably partial delegation is the better option for you. The next question is currently my carrier writes out the manifest and I sign off. Will the generators need to do this if there's no delegation? No. Um, so you do not need to delegate in order for the carrier uh, to uh, present you with a manifest for sign off. So even without delegation, carriers can still create draft manifests in the system with uh, the uh, relevant uh, facility and waste stream information and um, virtually hand it over for you to uh, uh, sign. Next question is, if we have multiple facilities set up under one CI business number, can each facility make a decision about what type of delegation they would like to do and have different AGDs for different facilities? Similarly, can a facility be granted access to a unique facility, not all facilities within the organization? Yeah, so... Um... Uh, I believe that you can, uh, on a facility level, decide what access, what partial delegation to give to the different AGDs. So you can give access to different AGDs for different facilities under the same account. I'm going to look to the team, uh, my behind the scenes team to maybe confirm that. Um, but I'm pretty sure it's on, on a facility basis that you can uh, delegate. Next question is, what accommodations are you going to provide for facilities that do not have internet access? We have many remote locations, but we do not have internet. Okay, thanks for that. So they're, they're um, uh, through the mobile app, uh, it, it supports um, uh, offline reporting. So you can input information into the mobile app offline. And then once uh, the user is in a place where there is uh, internet access, the information will get uploaded. Um, if um, uh, you still have concerns about how it will work for your facilities, uh, uh, please reach out to RIPRA uh, at the contact information provided, and um, uh, we can help uh, walk through it uh, with you directly. Just a reminder that the email is hwp at lpoa.ca. The next question is, if different companies pick up hazardous waste from a company, is it possible to have full delegation with some of them and with others partial delegation? So. Um, you um, you cannot have full delegate at the same facility. You can only have one full delegate, right? Um, so it's possible to do full delegation for a facility and then have an arrangement with that service provider to do partial delegation 
to other service providers, if you wish, um, but you can't do full delegation yourself uh, uh, at the same facility. The next question is, how will emergency waste generator number be handled for spill scenarios on site that are not registered as a waste generator? So the, the right, so the process for emergency spills will not be much different under the new system. Uh, it's just that the reporting will happen through the registry. So you will still be getting an emergency um, in spill situations. You'll still um, be following the same process you would today, um, which uh, typically involves getting an emergency generator number from the ministry. Um, and once you have that, you'll be able to accomplish the reporting that you need to do for that spill in the new system. The next question is for our field staff who are overseeing activities like the removal of drums of waste material, would, would these uh, field staff need to be registered with the HWP to be able to sign an electric manifest prepared by the carrier? No. So the mobile app is set up um, so that the carrier can uh, hand uh, their own device over for um, a generator staff to sign. Uh, so just like you might sign with, um, uh, you know, a, 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 a UPS or FedEx device when someone delivers something to your door, uh, the carrier can hand off their device so uh, the generator staff can sign off without the staff being uh, registered uh, as a user in the system. Next question is, as a large organization with numerous departments, we would only have one master admin for all RIPRA programs. Is that correct? Did you say we can create multiple ones if we want? Would you prefer to keep, would it be preferable to keep separate accounts for soil, batteries, hazardous waste, etc.? So there is, there will be one master admin for all RIPRA programs. There will be a primary user in each of the individual programs uh, that I believe will be able to manage secondary users and uh, set those up. Um, but there is, uh, there is always still one master admin for the entire RIPRA registry. Uh, the next question is, do generators need to have a TDG train employee to sign off on manifests? Or will having an AGD agreement eliminate that requirement? Um, so uh, that's a question for Transport Canada. So that AGD um, agreement um, relates only to the Ontario reporting requirements under Regulation 347. Um, whether or not or how you delegate TDG requirements um, is something for, uh, is a question for Transport Canada. The next question is, for municipalities that have extreme accounts, we have facilities that have hazardous waste generated. We don't have a business ID number. Will we have to contact to set up an account? Yes. So if you do, if you're a municipality without a business, without a, a business ID, uh, you will contact RIPRA um, and we'll help uh, get that account set up for you. The next question is, is there somewhere where we can find a list of AGDs? No. So we do not publish a list of AGDs, uh, but we encourage you to talk to your current service provider, or um, reach out to other uh, uh, waste management companies and start talking to them about uh, delegation. The next question is, will the monthly invoices be sent to the facility or generator or the head office? Um, the monthly invoices will be sent to, uh, I believe a primary user identified in your account. So they won't go to the individual facilities in the account. They'll go to a specific user 
um, uh, uh, in your account. The next question is, are service providers aware of these changes and making plans um, regarding delegation? I have made multiple connections to my service provider and they seem to have no idea or plan on the end. Okay, so we have, um, I, I mean, the short answer is they should be. We have done um, uh, substantial outreach over the summer uh, in sessions like this uh, with carriers and receivers uh, to talk to them about the changes, uh, including the delegation options available. Um, if your service provider uh, isn't aware of what's going on, uh, we encourage you to um, send them our way uh, and we will um, um, do what we can to try to get them up to speed. The next question is, can you suggest some ways to generate a key audit items to check for service suppliers, example carriers, as to look to ensure due diligence with this change in system? So uh, I'm not 100% sure how to answer that question uh, other than, um, um, uh, I guess to point out two things. So we're we're encouraging generators to talk to their service providers now uh, about this change and make sure you're ready. And in particular that you know um, uh, how you want to uh, accomplish delegation um, in the new system. Um, and um, maybe also uh, secondly mention that we, we will be developing um, uh, training materials specifically for uh, service providers, carriers and receivers, so they understand how the new system works um, and can uh, start using it properly as of January 1st. The next question is, can an AGD grant access to another carrier? So again, if you have fully delegated to a service provider, um, uh, that service provider can um, uh, do sub-delegation to other uh, service providers in the system. Uh, um, so there is a way to accomplish that. Um, um, or if you as a generator are setting up your own account without full delegation, um, you can identify multiple partial delegates um, in the system. Next question is, we have four doctors in the one room, each with their own business, but all under one umbrella. Should we register them each separately or keep as one registry? Um, so that's a good question. I think the best way to answer that is maybe uh, uh, would be to reach out to RIPRA on that specific case. I think if your multiple facilities in HWIN um, and uh, each facility is with a separate business, then you're probably separate accounts in the new system. Um, but if you're one facility in HWIN now, um, um, you should. Um, uh, uh, you'll be one facility in the new system. Next question. If the generator doesn't need a username and password to sign on the carrier's mobile device, how does the HWP system know who has signed it? So the, the carrier's device will record the name of the person along with the signature of the person who's signing. Again, that's an option available. If you uh, uh, prefer to have a registered user do uh, the generator sign off, um, then that can happen through uh, either the, the main portal or the mobile app. Next question is, a mail invoice to companies AP or can we pay with credit card online? Um, so yes, you will be able to pay with a credit card online. Um, there's a, a, a few payment options that will be available uh, through the registry. 
The next question is, will a company account cover multiple addresses of facilities owned by the same company? Yes. Um, one company account uh, will cover um, uh, all of the facilities um, that that company is managing or dealing with. Next question, will inactive waste classes get migrated over as well? Uh, I believe the answer to that is no. Um, so maybe I'll, uh, I'll, I'll look to the team uh, to our behind the scenes team to maybe confirm that. Uh, but that's one of the reasons why um, um, uh, you should try to um, update your H1 information if you can. Uh, as soon as possible. The next question is, if a company has multiple and separate HWIN accounts under the new system, the company will also, will only have one HWP generator account only? Correct. If uh, right now in HWIN, you, uh, there's an account for each facility. In the new system, there's an account for the company. Um, and so you will have, if you have multiple facilities, you'll have fewer accounts to manage under the new system. It will all happen under the same account. Next question is, do generators need to have the app also so carriers can process and initiate the manifest? No. Um, so carriers can initiate a manifest through the system either using the portal or through the mobile app, uh, the generator doesn't um, need to uh, uh, do that. So the process will, from the generator's perspective, can be similar to how it works today if you have a carrier presenting you with a filled in manifest, um, that can still happen through um, uh, uh, the online version that, uh, um, will be available in the registry. Okay. Uh, the next question is about fees and it's asking uh, a rough idea on, on costs. Um, I, I, I can't give you a rough idea on this session, uh, but we will be releasing uh, the fee uh, proposal uh, in um, a couple of weeks. Um, and you'll get a, if you got a notice about this session, you'll get a notice about the fee consultation as soon as it's um, available. The next question is about, um, is, is asking, will there be training specifically geared to municipalities? That's a great question. Um, uh, I will take that back to the team and um, um, uh, look at um, whether we've got that scheduled. Uh, or if not, um, you know, if there's enough demand for it, um, it's certainly something we can, um, we can consider. The next question is, will the registry allow us to download that information so we can build waste reports and trend data? Um, so we've, uh, uh, we are looking into that uh, as a possible functionality. Uh, right now, the registry is set up so all of the information will be available to you uh, when you log into your account. So the registry hosts all of the manifesting and other waste activity data. Um, there is no longer a need to keep uh, paper records under the Ontario Regulation 347, because uh, all the data will, going forward, will be in the registry. Um, but we have had some requests to be able to sort of extract or download information, and we are considering those. We will now take a quick break from the questions and launch our polls so that we can improve our webinars. So please take a few minutes to fill out these four questions.
Thank you so much for participating. We'll now end the polls and we'll get back to the questions. Yeah, the results of the of the poll. Um, so the next question is, so the new system would eliminate the mailing of manifest co copies and correction letters, example, the ministry? Um, so the short answer there is yes. Uh, so no copies starting January 1st, nothing's getting mailed to the ministry anymore. Um, all uh, uh, copies, the correction process, all of that happens through uh, the registry. The next question is, um, is it safe to say that no delegation will be the same as the existing HWIN process, except for paper manifest will now be electronic? That's right. Um, so, I, I, I mean, I, I guess I should say it depends how you, you are using HWIN right now. Um, uh, but yes, you don't have to delegate uh, if you want to set up your own uh, generation facility, manage your waste streams. Carriers uh, or service providers will still be able to create manifests in the system um, and um, uh, send them to you virtually to sign off on. Um, I also just before we get to the next question, just want to clarify one from earlier that I said I'd confirm. Uh, so I have confirmed that delegation in the system happens, does happen at the facility level. So you can do different partial delegations for different facilities, um, even if they're under one account. We do make it easy. So if you want to, if you're delegating to the same company, at the same level of delegation for all facilities, you can kind of do that in one go. But if you do want to uh, keep it different for different facilities, uh, you can do that at the facility level, even under one account. So Noah, uh, we are coming to the end of uh, our webinar. So this will be our last question. Our company deals with multiple out of province receivers as do our competitors who registered them in the new system and who would be the HD if they don't care about the system? Um, so um, uh, the if it's an out of province entity, um, then they uh, uh, may not have an obligation to uh, register in the new system. Um, but whoever's transporting the waste will still need to um, make sure that uh, the right generator and receiver gets inputted. Um, and so the obligation on making sure that information gets into the registry in the right way is still the same as it is under the current process. So in terms of your, you know, who is obligated for what, uh, none of that changes in the new system. All that's changing is sort of the process and how it's getting done. Um, if you have specific questions about exactly how to accomplish um, uh, the scenario you described, uh, please feel free to re reach out to us um, and we will um, uh, make sure there's information available so um, um, uh, you know how to do that. Thank you, Noah. We are now coming to the end of the webinar. Thank you all for attending. As mentioned, the webinar is being recorded, so we will share it on our website with the slide decks. Thank you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.